Hello again YouTube, we're back up in Clarksburg today for a 2005 Chevy Avio. I, my understanding is we're going to be replacing the front brakes and a caliper in this car this morning. And this poor little guy's looking a little on the rough side. Got a couple of charred electrical connectors. None of the wheels on this thing match. Let's see, we got one caliper with hardware, washers, we got brake pads with no hardware, just the brake pads. So, this one's going to be definitely a little bit of fun. Wow. Bad ball joint. Possibly bad wheel bearing. Anyway, that's just a bad ball joint. Well, that's just because the lots of bug nuts are loose. Alright. Not a bad wheel bearing, just a bad ball joint. Alright. That's not a just, but yeah, we got a bad ball joint. So lovely. So, uh, I'm gonna go get the owner real quick and advise him that the uh, bare minimum needs a ball joint on this side. Probably should get to the other side too and find out. Oh, 
That's no good either. It's right in here for this one. So this thing's shot. That control arm bushing is shot, so the control arm needs to be replaced. That lower ball joint is shot. That needs to be replaced. Yeah, you can see the movement on the camera. Well, this looks like a little bit of a different mess. So we don't need to be replacing a caliper. There's nothing wrong with the caliper. And the reason for his uh, front end dive off to the side that he was talking about was uh, all because of that control arm right there and this lower ball joint. So we're going to be slapping some brake pads in here. Even though I would kind of ill-advised, but not a huge big deal. Caliper moves fine. Everything here is good. Everything's actually fairly new. But uh, these control arms are bad, and the part that's got me really nervous is that's not a factory nut. Get in there real quick. The one underneath it is the factory nut. And that really scares me because it's nowhere near center. So it kind of makes me wonder what kind of a mess I'm getting myself into. That's really bad. Well, let's get to the brakes. These caliper bolts out of here, get the caliper off, out of the way, I don't want to twist up this hose, get your little brake hook, get it up here first, yeah, that's up and out of the way, now, well, at least the brake pads move. That's a little dry. All right, get these clips out of here. Let's get this bracket out of here. Bracket came off. Still nice and clean in here. I'll just put a little bit of lube on here to keep that from rusting up. And uh, see that boot right there? I don't know if you can focus in on that, but that boot's not exactly where it should be. So I'll take that apart, clean that up. So as you can probably see from this, this is going from a brake job to uh, two lower control arms. Now this is getting to be a lot of fun. So uh, we went down to the parts store to come get the uh, control arms and he came back with two ball joints. And mostly because I'm afraid of getting stuck in a situation I can't get myself out of. I am not starting those control arms until he comes back with the new ones. In the meantime, we're just going to do a little quick brake slap on this. These aren't really all that bad. I mean, they're, they're a little bit worn. But yeah, they're, they're not too bad. They're just really crusty. And the brake pads weren't bad, and the caliper brackets in pretty good shape. So, I'm just gonna do a pad slap on this, finish the pad slap on the other side, and then depending on what he comes back with, we'll uh, start trying to get that control arm unbolted. Get these caliper pins out. Pull back on the boot. Slide the pin out. Not 
too bad. Not too bad. Got a little bit of wear on it. But definitely need some more grease in there. Uh, the owner and the owner's father, father-in-law, running back and forth right now and intermittently back over here. So I'm going to keep my mask on for the time being. I'm sure you guys can still hear me okay. Go down in there. We'll loosen up and clear out everything that's in there. was not right. This one right here. I think somebody put that in there and they crinkled the crap out of it. And it's probably been sitting that way for a long time because it's creased. Droning from the fans or the uh, windmills up on the hill. I've heard people complain about how much noise they make, and I've never heard the noise before until just now. Let's clean all the way around. Let's see if we can figure out why this is creased the way it is. That's definitely not right. Definitely not right. Maybe it's all stretched. Well, I see what they did and why, but... all because yep. whoever did this did not take the time to uh, make sure things fit properly messing with it until it seals. <laughs> Trying to blow bugs off my arm with a mask on. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. Alright. Grease. Uh. Grease up the pins real good. Coat them up real good. About a quarter inch glob. Then rotate it as you put it down in. Makes everything happy. That one's all the way in. Cool. Okay, let's get some anti-seas, get these coated up with some anti-seas so we can put the hardware back on top of it. Back with my anti-seas, my broken, broken bottle, still haven't cracked open the new one yet. And yes, I've got a new one, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. And uh, that Chevy 2500 brake job I was working on. This is the tool that I was looking for, but it wouldn't have worked anyways because it don't have the clearance to get around the, the hub 
down to the spring clip that this holds in place but this is a little universal tool for those spring clips that hold the nails back to this yeah, just a little bit in, in here just get these surfaces remember it's just the surfaces that the hardware comes in contact with is all you really need to worry about owner is back yep trying to find himself a place to park they didn't have them in stock. Uh-oh. That's why I didn't get that started yet. Right. But I, uh, I didn't think they would. They well, that's, that's dangerous, so he should not be driving on this. So the thing is... Uh, you can have me Okay. I can get back up here within the next couple of days. Now, I, like I said, I've got those other couple of jobs to do, but it shouldn't be anything all too serious. See, my only problem is I need to call. my wife is in the hospital, so I got to get over there with my car. Yeah. But every day he doesn't use his car, he loses money because he doesn't work. Understood. So the problem is, you know, each day he lays here, he's losing money. Yep. So either we're just Fix it the best you can now, then I'll bring it back. Well, versus if I leave it here, that means I gotta get my car and I can't, I can't get out of here. Right. So it's a dilemma. Well, if I was doing this as a more professional, with a garage and all of that stuff, I would not be able to release the vehicle. That's that's seriously dangerous. I mean, it's, it's not going to go anywhere, but it makes the vehicle very difficult to handle in, a, in, a, in situations. But, uh... So, I guess the only realistic way to do this is to... Uh, I'll have to get the part, a load of the parts, and I'll call you when I get them. Okay. You know, that steering rack that I've got to do in the Lexus is the only thing that's going to be really seriously time-consuming. And yeah, that'll so. probably take me a day or two. Right. Um, the, right Ford, so. the, the, F, the F-250, that's kind of a little bit whenever I get the leisure. I got to pull both of the, the rear wheels apart and figure out why. It's almost as though there's a restriction in the brake line. It won't let his back brakes release. But I think it's just because he gets them so hot they get, they get seized up. Right. But I need to figure out a way to test his brake lines to make sure. Because these things here... If you get a rupture on the inside of the line oh, yeah. and it rips it, it can cause a check valve effect. That piece will fold down, it'll pressure against it, it swells up and blocks the hole, and then your brake fluid can't return. Right. So that's a possibility. He, we've discussed it before. I've, I've said that I don't believe that's the case because I can push the pistons back, but we'll put a little bit more uh, attention to that to find out. Hey, the, tell uh, them about these headlights? About, yes. The hardware on here I've already cleaned up. Oh, it looks good. I thought it was brand uh, new. This one here was the bottom one. Yeah. I'm going to be using this one as the top one now because there's a little bit of wear on it. The bottom one doesn't have any wear. So the one that they have, the actual pressure is applied to, I'm going to use this one. So the brakes will be smoother. Um, the pin boot wasn't installed properly on this one. It's all straightened out now. They've been taken apart, cleaned up. The uh, I put some anti-seize on here to keep rust from building up underneath the hardware, so the brakes won't become an issue. Let's get the excess out of the middle. And I'll just put the brake pads on it, and the same thing on the other side. But both of these control arms absolutely have to be replaced. Yeah, not, not as soon see, as we can get back here. Well, it's all the same piece, right? Yes. All right, it's so I probably. I could probably, let's see. Well, it's all up to you whenever you can get back realistically. So today's Thursday, maybe next Wednesday or something? Oh, I could most likely get back here sooner than that. All right. Tuesday? Or? Really depends on the weather. Right. Check the weather and... Uh,
two squealers. Squealers go on the inboard. Oh, they got squealers on them, huh? Two of them do. And squealer goes on the inboard on the leading edge. That would be this one here. So that one goes over on the other side. And this one's here. here. And just for ha-has. I've had some people say stuff to me about not lubing the ears of the brake pads. Really? Yeah, I, to me it's a, it's a mixed it's a mixed thing, but people are recommending that I do it, so we'll give that a shot. The whole idea is just that it makes it slide around there easier. My issue is that it attracts dirt. Right, yeah. I put, I put stuff on. underneath this to keep it from rusting, but I usually don't put anything in here because I'm afraid of dirt. Yeah, you, the grit, and the grit makes it worse, but everybody's like, how come you didn't lube the ears of the brake pads? Okay, so I'll lube the ears. All the times I change brake, brake pads, I never put any lube on it. I, I usually don't either. But that's, that's all that's for, is just to help slide that a little easier. But the, the, ears, the ears of the brake pads themselves will rust a little bit sometimes once the enamel's worn off of them. But that's, that's not enough to... So you were able to salvage the clips, huh? It's pretty good. Yeah, the, cl the clips weren't damaged. One of them had a little wear on it, so I put that one up on the top. And this is this is what I call a ghetto brake job, but sometimes people don't have a lot of money to spend, and especially on this car. You know what it is when you're doing this type of work. With a car like this, it's like it takes a beating. As you said, it's hitting potholes. Yeah, well, with that control arm the way it is, it's really going to be bad. Sure you don't want something to drink? No, I got water in the car, but thank you. This side's done. Now we'll get over to the pat slap on the other side. And getting over onto this side, sitting there looking down in there. I don't know if you can get enough light down in here or not, but that inner, this rubber right here, is separated all the way around. So that control arm is no good there, but this control arm is specifically bad. See that movement? That bushing is also shot. So we got back bushing, front bushing on this side, on the other side, just the back bushing, and the ball joint. On this side, the ball joint. It's kind of hard to tell with all this play, but there is play in the ball joint as well. So this one here, you have the front, the rear, and the ball joint down on the bottom. So that control arm also needs to be replaced. But we're gonna pull this one apart and do this brake real quick. He's loosened up somehow. Let's get the caliper out first. Double wrench method, get that loose. already pushed back. Did that with a screwdriver to demonstrate for the customer how good condition the uh, calipers are in, which if you can tell by the fact that there's no rust on this in Massachusetts, it means this is new. Oh, brand, yeah, that's new. Look at the inside of that caliper. That's brand new. 
Still got a sticker on it. Uh, and it doesn't weigh squat, so we'll let it hang for a second. And get over here, hang our hook, pull the caliper up. on the hook. Brake pads move nice and easy. Not too significantly worn on that one or that one. This side didn't even need new brakes but the other side was kind of getting there so no biggie. Brake pads are cheap. All right now let's see what we got. No real wear there. Yeah so this is going to be nice and easy as well. So somebody, <laughs> that wasn't even in the boot. That's charming. Not even in the boot. Oh well. We're going to get that apart, get that all cleaned up. Get these cups out of here. We'll be reusing these. We're going to clean all of the junk off of these. But this is, this is all new. It just wasn't done properly. Let's get at it. Oh, the movement in this thing is ridiculous. All right, I'm gonna have to have you move. Yeah, maybe not. one. No. Alright, we're going to have to move you. Turned inside out, the wear marks on it. Supposed to be up and over that dirty lip. <laughs> See why the guy didn't do this? There, it's like that. That's what it's supposed to be. This one here. Same thing, it didn't flip the lip, lip over. There we go. See, the lip is supposed to stick up. But I'm going to pull these apart, put some fresh grease in them. Clean this caliper bracket up, although there's really not much of anything on it. We're not going for perfection, we're just trying to get some of the crud off of it. There wasn't really much on it to begin with. Now we're going to go put some silicone or some uh, anti-seize down here on these contact surfaces that we've cleaned up. Access off of there. Access out of here. Anywhere that's going to rub on the rotor. Let's get this hardware cleaned up. If there's any imperfections in the hardware, they'll show up right away with the file. As long as we can get this like that, it means there's basically no imperfections in it. Cleaned up like that. 
clean it up a little more with brake cleaner. And I'm doing this more for demonstration purposes than anything. that one all up the same way. Now we'll grab brake cleaner. Again. Get a hardware clips all nice and new looking. Right, we're still recorded. I ordered the pawn so be here next Thursday. Next Thursday? Thursday. I'd be really nervous. Yeah, I told him to go slow. <laughs> now I noticed something else too. I, I caught it with the camera. This bushing right here, yeah. it's not ripped. It's separated. That whole that whole rubber piece is all separated from the mount. Is that on the control arm? Yeah. The other side's all torn to pieces. This side right here, it's just separated. separated. But this one here is all worn out in the front. So this one here is shot in three points. The ball joint's got play in it, even though it's kind of new. That's got movement in it because it's separated. That's got movement in it because it's worn out. The ball joint is new? The ball joint's been replaced. The ball joint just the it, ball joint itself? Yep. Oh, I, thought you had a, I thought it was one unit. When you get the control arm, it comes with one. I know we did something with the ball joint, but yeah, this this ball joint was replaced independently. You can do just the ball joint by itself. Right, but these are shot anyway. But these so control arms are shot. So there's no point in getting a ball joint when you need when right. you, when the control arm's going to come with one. Right. I did that on a uh, Chevy Blazer. I'm gonna kill this for now. Take your caliper bracket. And the uh, least worn one. And we'll put that one in the bottom. Well, that's the top in this case. Put that one down there. And snap that one in there. We'll go ahead and put the caliper bracket in place. brake pads, put a little bit of lube on the ear, in the ear, Just a little bit like that, nothing major. And then slide it on the inside, put it up in place, get the grease in there. Same thing on the outboard. 
Just a little bit there in the ear. Just getting it on the ear. We're not getting it anywhere else. Push it up into where it's going to sit. Get some grease onto it. Where it's going to sit. Get some grease onto it. And then just slide it into place. Wipe that grease off. Again, make sure that little lip is facing up and over the groove. Tell it nice and easy. And same thing on the top one. For any issues, clean all the way up to the top of it. Where they weren't seated correctly to start with. A fresh grease. And then rotate the pan down in. And all that excess grease come out the sides. sure that that little lip is where it's supposed to be. Put the caliper back in place. And go ahead and put the bolts back in. Check everything, make sure it's all tight. Pad Slap, 2005 Chevy Avio. Hope you guys found this one helpful. Feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. Don't forget to click that notifications button. And uh, don't forget, you got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches, and tune back into the next one, hopefully part two on getting those lower control arms replaced. It has me a little concerned.